Hello viewers, in this lecture, I will explain how to approximate the man level fractional integral. This integral is defined by equation 1. In equation 1, the term x minus s whole power alpha minus 1 is known as kernel of the integral, where alpha is a positive real number and this is what we call order of this integral. This integral is also called left Riemann level fractional integral. So the rule that I'm going to drive today is called left rectangle product rule. Given a function f from closed interval 0 to b to set of real numbers r, whose RL integral is to be determined on this closed interval or the domain of the function. For that purpose, we can choose n plus 1 grid points as you can see on the screen starting from x0 to xn where x0 is 0 and xn is p as we are given in the closed interval. So whenever we think to approximate a function with polynomial interpolation, the simplest function that comes into our mind is a constant function. And this is what I have written in equation number 2. f of x is approximated by f of xj, where this xj is the left end point of the interval. So now, if you replace x by xj in the definition of the RL fractional integral, then you will get equation number 3. Further, in equation number 3, the integration interval that is from 0 to xj is now broken into several sub-intervals. As you can see, the first term from 0 to x1 and then second term, the second integral, x1 to x2 and finally, the last integral from xk to xk plus 1. So, if I add all of these integrals, we can use this summation notation and hence we have equation number 4. So in this equation 4, if you put k is equal to 0 in the lower limit, then you will have x0 as the lower limit of integration. And if you put j minus 1 in the upper limit, you will have xj. I mean, we will be back to equation number 3. So in equation 4, we can easily and safely use this summation notation. So as I said that on each subinterval, the function can be approximated by a constant and this is what I have actually written using this green color. The function on this interval is approximated by this constant f of xk while note down xk is the left end point of the interval and that is why we are calling the rule as the left product rule. So now in equation 1, if you replace the function by this constant f of xk, you will get, not in equation 1, in the previous equation that we had just obtained in our previous slide. So if you replace, then you will get f of xk and hence you will have this equation 5. So in equation 5, now I have taken outside uh, this term f of xk and hence we have equation number 6. After, if I integrate equation 6, I will have equation 7 whereas the integration is performed just by power rule. After that, using the fundamental rule of calculus, you can get equation number 8 by taking this minus alpha out of the summation sign. And equation number 9 is obtained by using this property of the gamma function and multiplying this minus 1 with the terms inside the summation. So you will have equation number 9. After that, equation 10 can be written where this a, j, k, I have written separately and called it equation number 11. So if you combine equation 10 and 11, you will have the same equation that we have previously, I mean equation number 9. So note that the, this is what we call weights, okay? And uh, a, j sub k is actually known as weights and they are independent of n but they depend on the fractional order alpha. So now if we have equally spaced grid 
in that case we know that xj will be equal to jh because our initial point is zero and remember we had the domain zero to b so the left hand point was zero the step size h is computed by b minus n b is the length of the interval and we have n uh, number of equations or the number of data points now the relation 11 can be reduced to equation number 12 because now xj is replaced by jh, xk by kh and similarly xk plus 1 by k plus 1 times h. So if I further simplify equation number 12, I will get this equation that you see on the top of the screen and in this equation if I take h common, I will have this second equation. Finally, by taking h power alpha common, I will have equation number 13. Note down equation number 13 is very important. Here the weights do not depend on J and K individually, but they depend on the difference J minus K. What does it mean? It means that they preserve the convolution structure that you had noticed in equation number 1. I mean in the kernel of the Riemann level integral operator. Remember, it has a kernel x minus s power alpha minus 1. So there was a difference in the kernel and then we have the similar sort of a structure in the weights. That is equation number 13. And this feature can be exploited to reduce the memory requirements and computational cost. So finally, Equation 13, if you combine with either 11 or 12, we will get our required formula, equation 14, in which these weights are denoted by equation number 15. So if somebody who is familiar with the classical numerical analysis, if you replace alpha by 1, you will have the classical left product rectangle in classical numerical analysis. So finally, I have collected the rule in one line. So this is what you see. The green color formula is what we call left product rectangle rule to approximate the Riemann level fractional integral in the field of fractional calculus. So this is one of the most frequently used formulas to approximate RL fractional integral. I hope you understood the derivation step by step. Let me also tell you that this work doesn't belong to me. I have taken this topic from the resource whose citation I have given at the bottom of each slide. Okay, so uh, I have only tried to drive the method step by step. Next time in my next lecture, I will show you that how we can design the MATLAB code for this left product rectangle rule to approximate the Riemann level fractional integral. I hope you have enjoyed the lecture. Finally, I would request you to like, share, and to subscribe my channel. Thank you so much for watching the lecture.